here with Coach JP. Coach, uh, get ready for practice. Go on, uh, let's start talking about a little bit the defensive end position. Obviously, you got two huge guys to replace. How's that unit looking overall going into practice? Well, you know, obviously, you know, as you stated, replacing Jermaine and Kier is, is not a simple task. But the thing I feel really excited and, and comfortable about going into this year is uh, the, the quality depth that we've been able to build over the last couple of years. You know, we're going in with nine guys uh, in the fall camp at defensive end, and I really feel like there's there's a, a bunch of guys in that, that group that are going to be significant contributors for us this year. Uh, where one of my main focuses and jobs this year uh, in camp is to make sure that we allocate the reps in an appropriate way where we're getting a great evaluation because the depth of having six or seven guys that you think could really play a role and contribute uh, doesn't happen very often. So, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good challenge to have them. How about going into this? Obviously, they've had an off season to get stronger, get bigger in some cases or smaller. Who's kind of made a lot of progress in that regard in the last few months? Yeah, you know, I mean, you're seeing, you know, I think Coach Storms does a fantastic job, uh, and you do see some significant change in, in terms of body in a lot of our guys. I mean, I, I'll use Patrick Payton as an example. Uh, he came in kind of a thinner frame guy. Um, you know, he's carrying well over 250 now. He's moving well, you know, so I'm excited for him. Byron Turner has changed his body. Uh, Derek McClendon, from the time we've gotten here to, to where he is now, has really done a tremendous job. So uh, there's a bunch of guys who have done a really good job in the weight room and have seen some, some significant gains. So uh, now it's, it's going to be time tomorrow to kind of see see how much that hard work is paying off. Derek McClendon's a guy that throughout the spring you guys praised how he had kind of come along, started showing signs. What is it that he did over the past nine months now that put him in position? be more of a contributor. Well, you know, the thing about Derek that's always allowed him to have the opportunity to be successful is his work ethic. Um, you know, he's a guy that every single day, regardless of what type of workout we're doing, whether it's practice or a tour of duty or, you know, just one of our, uh, you know, our, our uh, preseason workouts, he's always got that mindset of hard work, energy, enthusiasm, leadership to him. And I think when you stack those days on top of each other, day after day, week after week, year after year, you see incremental growth and small gains. And all of a sudden you look up and you're like, wow, he's a completely different player than he was before. Um, and I think that's, that really describes Derek probably pretty well because it's not one thing that he's done that has, has changed his, his uh, trajectory in his career. It's the fact that he just came and worked hard every day. And over the course of time, the hard work is paying off. Has Jared Burst been a fast learner for you guys over these nine months? Yeah, extremely fast. Him coming in mid-year was, was uh, obviously critical for him. Um, you know, he was able to, probably about halfway through spring, I felt like he was becoming more comfortable with, with our terminology, our system, you know, what, how he fit within the scheme. And um, Now with some of the new rules the NCAA has implemented where we have a little bit more hands-on throughout the course of the summer, um, you know, I, I'm fully confident that he's prepared and ready to roll heading into camp. Coach, how's it going to shake out between, obviously, you have kind of have a Fox position and an end position. Which players are kind of fitting into those roles and how important will, obviously, this next 31 days be for you in figuring that out? Yeah, you know, so the Fox and end roles have kind of become more similar than they are different anymore. Um, however, there's a couple guys that we target probably more predominantly playing Fox. Uh, Dennis Briggs is a guy that we feel uh, is going to play more reps at Fox than he would at end. Uh, probably Leonard Warner would be a guy that we would feel like was going to play more Fox and end. And then you got a guy like Jared Verse, uh, who I think is probably going to be more of an end than a Fox. Uh, and then really with the remainder of the group, I'm thinking that they're going to have to learn both spots and, and be able to, to fit as best they can to give us as much, much uh, depth and multiplicity in our front as we can have. What, what does Briggs' mixture of size and ability bring to that position? Because he's a guy who can play inside, he can play outside. He's done it throughout his career. Yeah, you know, the thing, Dennis kind of gives us that Keir Thomas element um, from the standpoint of a big physical defensive end in terms of the run game, but has the ability in passing situations to move inside and create some mismatches on some guards in the pass rush. So Dennis can do a lot of different things for us. Um, his size, speed, athleticism um, is going to 
be able to allow us to create some mismatches for him uh, by who we put him on, whether it's aligning him on a tight end in, in the run game or aligning him on a guard in, in the pass game, just to put him in the best position to be successful. Putting on your other hat, obviously, this last season was not up to your standards on special teams. What can you guys do differently, or will you do something differently maybe this fall, or will be more personnel changes? How, how are you approaching special teams this yeah, year? Yeah, you know, one is I, I wholeheartedly believe in the foundations and the principles of what we do and, and how we do it. Uh, Coach Norvell has provided great leadership from a, from a special team standpoint and what he wants the program to look like. Um, there's a lot of things schematically that I wholeheartedly, 100% wouldn't change. But as a coach, you always got to go back and evaluate how you're doing things, how you're practicing, what you're asking guys to do uh, to make the improvements that are necessary. And I feel like through the course of the uh, off season, instead of making some emotional decisions immediately following the, the season when we we're all disappointed in terms of how, how it played out, um, we were really able to take a step back, take a look at what went well and why, what didn't went, what go as well and why, and how we fix it. And I really feel confident going into this camp that we've addressed the issues that needed to be addressed. And uh, we're going to get back to being more of the special teams that, that I'm accustomed to being part of, that Coach Marvell is accustomed to being part of, and, and what this program needs to, to have from its special teams to be the, the team that we want to be. With regards to guys who would do returns, so how much does new personnel members help in the sense of options and guys, like a guy like Michael Pittman sure. on returns, who seems very comfortable in such a role? Yeah, I mean, we definitely were able to strategically um, add some guys to the roster that not only are going to help us offensively, but are going to be significant contributors on special teams. I mean, you said Mike Pittman. That's a really good example. Uh, Trey Benson, Deuce Span. I mean, those are going to be guys that um, – are going to be impactful in terms of the return game, um, and and it's tremendous for us that we could pick them up. Right. Thank you, JP. Thanks, Coach.